Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I am back with another math video for you guys. Today we are looking at lesson 4.4 and in lesson 4.4 we are going to be working with something called the distributive property. The distributive property is just another one of those multiplication properties that we can use if we want to take a multiplication problem that may be a little bit challenging for us and break it down into smaller parts and make it easier for us to work with. In this particular video and in this lesson we are going to go back on some of the things that we learned with making arrays, how to create arrays, and how to look at arrays. What's going to be different in this video with our arrays is we're going to kind of break those arrays into two smaller arrays to help us create two smaller multiplication sentences. Now, even though we are going to change the multiplication problem, or problem, I should say, we are not going to change it so much that we are dealing with a totally different problem. We're just going to manipulate one of our factors to make our lives a little bit easier in solving a multiplication problem. So I'm going to set up my whiteboard for you guys, go through some examples, and then we will be done. If you're a parent out there or if you're a student watching this, obviously, this is going to be one of those lessons where you do have to use this strategy to solve the problems because this is something that we need to be familiar with in case we encounter it on a quiz or a test, but also you want to be familiar with it because this strategy might actually be helpful to you. So again, I'm going to set up the board to give you guys some examples, come back with some closing thoughts, and then finish the video for the day. Alrighty, here is our first example. We are multiplying six times nine. And I'm gonna try to really make sure I go slow and take my time in these examples because like I said, I know that this strategy in this lesson can be a little bit challenging. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna go back to what we learned about um, taking multiplication sentences and creating arrays for them. We wanna make sure that we remember that the first factor tells us how many groups, in other words, how many rows that we're gonna have so that is gonna represent our equal groups. And the second factor is going to tell us, well, okay, how many in each, or how many are gonna be in each of those equal groups? And that also represents our columns in the array. So I know that I'm gonna have six equal groups, and in those equal groups, I need to have nine in every group. The R tells me that means I'm gonna establish six rows going down, and then I'm gonna have a total of nine columns going across. So let me get my array set up first. So I'm gonna start with my first factor and establish my six groups. So here's group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, and group six, okay? Now I'm going to look and I'm going to make sure that I have in each of those groups, nine in total going across. Realizing that that first X that I put down to establish the group counts as one of the nine. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm gonna continue that for the rest of the six or the five remaining groups. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And my last group, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just to be sure, do I have six rows? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Do I have nine columns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so good. Now I know that my array is correct. That's step one. Okay, now that I've confirmed that my array is arranged correctly, I'm going to go back to looking at this problem and think to myself, okay, I'm a little unsure of six times nine. I'm not really feeling very confident that I'll be able to just multiply that. And I have my array created, so I'm going to think, which of these two factors can I break down to create two smaller multiplication sentences that I'm a little bit more comfortable with. I'm gonna break down the nine just because I'm a little less comfortable with my facts of nine. And instead of using nine, I'm gonna think of nine as five plus four. So instead of doing six times nine, I'm gonna have two new multiplication sentences. One is going, and I'm gonna still use that first factor. One is going to be six times five, because that's 
part of nine, this five, because remember I'm bringing, breaking down my nine to five plus four, and I'm going to use six times four, and I'm gonna break down my array to represent that. So instead of six times nine, I'm gonna piece this apart so that I can create six times five. So I have six groups going down already, one, two, three, four, five, six, but I need five going across. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be my first chunk of the array. And this section represents six times five, okay? Now, if I've done that correctly, what should be remaining over here, this marker is not working anymore, here we go. What should be remaining over here is six times four. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six groups going down, and one, two, three, four, four going across. So yep, that represents six times four. So that is just me breaking down the array based on the fact that I wanted to break down this original multiplication problem into two smaller problems. And I did that by taking the nine, which was the second factor, and breaking that apart into a five and a four. So now we're gonna move on and look at, okay, now that I've done that, how do I solve this using the distributive property? So what I've done here is I have moved the array out of the way because I needed some space on my whiteboard. Remember that our original problem was six times nine, but I chose to break that down into two smaller multiplication sentences by breaking down that nine into a five and a four, leaving my first factor six because I didn't change that at all. Now I'm gonna just multiply these two smaller products. I know my facts of five very simply. Very quickly, I know that six times five is 30. I know that I'm gonna to need to add these sums together because I, this five and this four really represent that nine in the original problem. So I'm bringing down this addition sign that I put in between my two smaller multiplication sentences to remind myself that I was gonna to have to add at the very end. Next, I'm gonna look at six times four. Mm. What I really like about this is if I don't know my fours, I can rely on the double strategy that we learned in a previous video to solve six times four. So let's just practice that. Let's say I don't know my fours, but I know that six times two is 12. And my double strategy taught me that when I have facts of four, I can multiply by two instead and double my product. And I know that 12 plus 12 is gonna be 24. Therefore, six times four is 24. Love it, I love when I can use all the things that I've learned in previous videos to help me in my current lesson. Now I'm left with 30 plus 24. Here, I like this one also because I'm thinking of all that I learned in my addition strategies. This is a very simple set of numbers to add because 30 is based on 10, and now I know very quickly that 30 plus 24, well that is gonna equal 54. Now, all of this tells me then that six times nine, if I'm looking at that multiplication sentence, that using the distributive property, I was able to figure out that six times nine has a product of 54. So that is my first example. I'm surely gonna give you guys another example because I know this is a little bit tricky. So we'll go through another example and then go from there. All right, here we have example number two. We have six times seven. Okay, I'm gonna think to myself, well, um, I'm not really sure about this particular multiplication problem, so I'm gonna break down one of my factors. I'm gonna choose to break down my seven because it's a bigger number. Maybe I'm a little less comfortable with that. So I know I'm gonna be breaking down my seven, but the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna create an array for the original problem. So I know that this problem tells me that I need six equal groups or six rows, and in those equal groups, I need a total of seven, so I should have seven columns. So let me set up my array really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me make 
sure that I have my array correctly. Do I have six rows? One, two, three, four, five, six going across. Yes. Do I have seven columns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. My array is correct. Now let's look at the seven. How can I break down seven into uh, two numbers that are just easier for me to work with? Well, I know that seven is five plus two, so I'm gonna use those instead. So now six times seven is going to become, my first part of that is gonna be six times five. And I know I'm gonna have to add my product, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that addition sign right in there, plus six, I'm not changing that factor at all, so it's in both sets of parentheses, times two because five plus two is equal to that seven. Now I wanna make sure that my array is broken up to match that. So the first one I need is six times five. So I know I already have six rows going across. I just need to count over to five. So one, two, three, four, five. Box this in very carefully. Tell myself that this represents six times five and I can use that to find the product of six times five if I need to. And this remaining section here represents six times two. I can use, I won't put parentheses on that one since I didn't do one on the other one. I can use that little chunk of the array to find the product of six times two if I need to. Now let's move away from our array and then just deal with working this problem out. So let me erase all of this remembering what my two smaller problems were. So I know my original problem was six times seven. I decided to break that up using my array as six times five plus six times two, knowing that I need to add the two products, reminding myself that five plus two is seven and that is where I got those two from. I didn't change the six, which is why it's in both sets of parentheses. Now all I need to do is multiply. Six times five, I know that very easily because I know my facts of five, like the back of my hand, that's 30. I'm gonna bring down this addition sign to remind myself I must add my products. Six times two, I know my twos, that's 12. So that's easy. Now I just need to add, again, this is nice and easy. 30 is based on 10, so this is gonna make this addition problem super easy. 30 plus 10 is equal to, I'm sorry, 30 plus 12 is equal to 42. Therefore, I know that the product of six times seven is going to be 42, okay? So we're gonna do one more example. Hopefully by this point, it's starting to make a little bit more sense to you. All right, here's our final example for this lesson. And in this example, I'm not even gonna draw an array because I'm starting to feel like, you know what? I don't need the array. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a distributive property without the array because I'm feeling, I'm feeling much more confident now. So I'm gonna look at six times eight. I am going to choose to break down the eight because that is easy. I'm just gonna break it down into two fours because I know that eight is really just four doubled. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up my problem because I know I'm going to use a distributive property. I know that there's gonna be two different multiplication sentences. There's going to be some addition at the end of those two products. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these pieces down. That makes it easy. I know that I'm not breaking down the six. That is not the number that I broke down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the six in both of those because that's gonna stay the same. The number that I chose to break down was eight and I told myself that eight really is four plus four. So I know that a four is gonna go here and a four is gonna go there because four plus four is equal to eight. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and multiply again. If I don't know my fours, I can use the double strategy. So on this one, I'm gonna use the double strategy. I'm gonna say, you know what? I don't know what six times four is. So I'm gonna do six times two because I do know that six times two is 12. And using my double strategy, I'm gonna do 12 plus 12. Oops. And I know that that's 24. Therefore, six times four must equal 24. So let me go ahead and move that up here 
figure that out using my double strategy. And since this is the exact same problem, I don't even need to go through all of that again. I'm going to say, well, I already know that 6 times 4 is 24. And then I know that I have to add those two together. 24 plus 24 is going to equal 48. So that tells me that the product of 6 times 8 using the distributive property in this case is going to be 48. So that is the distributive property. I've given you three examples. I showed you how to use the array or break apart your array in the first two examples. And in this one, I didn't even put the array down. In your homework tonight, if you're looking at this for that kind of support, I believe they already show you arrays, so you won't have to create them. But that's your final example. I'm gonna give you some closing thoughts for this video, and then we will wrap it up for the day. Okay, so those are our examples, and I know this lesson is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit more challenging than maybe some of the other ones, but it is definitely doable if you just stop, take your time, and really have confidence in yourself in the process. So in closing, just a couple of things that I want us to remember is that when you're using the distributive property, it's always best to maybe break down the factor that you are the least comfortable with. So if you have six times nine and you feel more comfortable with dealing with your facts of six, then break down that nine into two smaller parts to make your life a little bit easier. When you break it down and create those two separate multiple multiplication problems in those parentheses, you want to make sure to remember to find the product of each multiplication problem you have created and then add those products together so that you make sure that you get the right answer. If you forget to add the products together, then your answer won't be right and the distributive property wouldn't have helped you at all and we don't want that to happen. So. I do hope that this video was helpful to you guys. Just remember if you're watching this to do your homework that you do have to make sure that you follow this particular strategy in completing your homework tonight. But down the line, this will just be another option for you if you would like to use it if you end up liking this strategy. But as always, like I said, I hope this video is helpful to you guys. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. That really keeps me encouraged and it makes encourage and make sure that this video is shared out with as many people as possible. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you all have an excellent rest of the day. Bye everybody.